So thank you very much for the kind introduction and uh, thank you for the organizers for the invitation to come and speak here to all of you today. Um, yes, my topic of my talk is the multi-domain lifestyle interventions for prevention and mainly I will focus on, on the finger trial and the following Worldwide Fingers initiative. Um, we are facing a big challenge. I think everyone in this room knows that um, there will be more and more people who live to old age, which is wonderful, but at the same time there will be also more and more people who will develop dementia when they age. Um, in the past about 40 years we have learned from observational studies quite a lot about the risk factors and protective factors that are behind Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And we know that it's a multifactorial disease, it's complex disease, the disease takes years and years to de develop before the symptoms come. Um, based on these, um, based on these uh, knowledge of how common these different risk factors are and uh, how much they might contribute to dementia, it has been uh, estimated that maybe about 30%, maybe even more might be might be attributable to prevention. Many of the risk factors are such that there might, we might be able to modify them. There are lifestyle factors, such as diet and exercise, and then there are vascular factors. Uh, so there is potential for prevention. Um, but what has been lacking for quite some time is trials where we actually try to do some, some of these preventive actions and see what happens. Earlier this year, WHO launched the first guidelines related to risk reduction of cognitive decline and dementia. They listed quite a long list of, of risk factors that might be uh, important for the uh, dementia prevention. For many of these, um, the evidence is still uh, moderate at best. Um, and there were important research gaps that were uh, stated in, this, in these guidelines. One important thing is harmoni harmonization of research methods so that we can actually compare different studies. We have really little information from low and middle income countries at the moment. Uh, we don't know that well what are the midlife and late life risk factors that are most uh, important in terms of prevention. And what is lacking is really long term randomized control trials and multi domain interventions. That, is, uh, that has been a strong focus of research in the few past years, and, and there is accumulating evidence, but so far we need, need still more evidence, especially for the multi domain interventions. The FINGER trial was the first large-scale multi-domain intervention that showed that uh, doing this lifestyle prevention, you can influence cognition. Here is a finger in one figure. So we had 1,260 persons participating in the FINGER study. They were quite young, older adults. They were from 60 to 77 years at the start of the study. They were from the general population, and they had a little bit of increased risk. Then they were randomized. Half of them received this multi-domain intervention and other half received regular health advice. And the intervention was quite long-lasting. Long it lasted for two years with the idea that if you are able to improve, have a healthier lifestyle during two years, maybe that will also last after the trial. The two-year results were positive. We have followed these persons five and seven years, and we are currently analyzing how, uh, how the intervention effects will last in the, in the duration, and now we are planning even to follow these persons up to 10 years. This will hopefully start next year. What we then, then, then did in the finger intervention, in the multi-domain intervention, the participants who received this multi-domain intervention received quite a lot of things. There was nutritional counseling, there was exercise training, especially at the gym, which was new for many of our participants. There was cognitive training, and then there was careful monitoring of, 
vascular and metabolic risk factors. They had several visits and much training during the two years. What we then observed after the two years, our main outcome after two years was cognitive function. It was measured with this uh, composite cognitive test battery. It includes several standard cognitive tests. And what we saw, that after two years, uh, the, uh, the cognitive function was uh, improved more in the intervention group compared to the control group. So first time we could see in a, in a clean, randomized trial setting at, that by actively uh, doing something with the risk factors, you can actually have a measurable effect on cognitive function. In addition to the, this uh, primary outcome, we saw that intervention was beneficial for executive function, for processing speed and for memory. Um, here are some pictures from the interventions. I think the key issues in the intervention was that we had both group training and individual training. It was quite intensive. And we had, even if it was quite intensive, we still had quite high adherence. So people were participating quite a lot, quite well in what we proposed them. Uh, the experiences and the feedback from the participants was very positive. They enjoyed the intervention and there were no serious adverse effects. In addition to cognition, we have also looked at uh, several other outcomes because as the intervention was uh, quite broad, so we thought that it might have good effects also on other things, not just cognition. Um, here on the left side, you can see the intervention effect on developing new chronic diseases during the two years. Um, the red bar shows that in the intervention group, there was a lower risk of developing new chronic diseases compared to the control group. Um, then on daily functioning, we saw that uh, there was less decline in daily functioning. So here we can see actually the red line, which is the intervention group, shows that the daily functioning remained quite stable in the intervention group. And, and the, in the control group, which is now the red line, it's, uh, there are more new disabilities, more, more difficulties in daily functioning emerging during the two years. Also health-related quality of life, we saw that uh, with the RAND scale that in two out of the eight domains, the intervention group had better results. We are uh, analyzing the finger data with, uh, in, in many ways. And the goal is really to, to understand what works, uh, for who in whom it works, and how might this be even better in the next new trials. So we are, uh, for example, um, analyzing how to define um, the at-risk populations. Who are the people that are likely to benefit from our interventions? We are, of course, interven investigating how different parts of this multi-domain intervention, are they all important? And what about the adherence? Are people following what we propose to them? And how might, are there some in individuals who might meet, need additional support to adhere? Uh, as said, we have looked at other outcomes, not just cognition, and we have also tried to see if there are certain uh, population groups who seem to benefit more of the intervention. In addition, we are so using this data to uh, try to also understand the mechanisms, mechanisms that lead to dementia and mechanisms that might be behind the, the effect of the intervention. So we ha have different kinds of biomarkers that we are now investigating. And of course, the cost effectiveness uh, of the intervention is an important topic that, that, is, um, that will be, uh, we, have, we will have some, some results on that shortly. Uh, what we think are the key issues in, in the finger trial, because there have been also other trials, and um, some have shown some positive effects, some not. So what, is, what would be important to, to have really an intervention that works? Uh, from our experience, we think that group activities are quite important 
it's especially important for keeping up the adherence. For example, the per persons who are participating in the, in the physical activity, the gym visits, and then when they were participating in the group, so it was sort of extra motivation for them to come again, to not to miss on the social aspect. Um, our counseling and training was individualized and it was very concrete. And it was intensive. I think the key is to do the right things and do enough of them. Staff was educated. The intervention was small steps and it was right timing. And of course, we also always tried to give positive feedback and so that everybody would enjoy being part. But it all, all starts with the person and for them to find their own motivation to do the changes. And now we are trying to sort of use these lessons that we have learned from Fringer when we are both uh, doing new trials worldwide and also uh, adapting interventions or, or this model to different contexts. In Finland we have um, done a bit of work to try to understand how to put this free intervention which was conducted in a research setting into real world. And here, of course, we cannot work alone, and we have worked very closely with our, our key stakeholders in, in one of the regions in Finland. We had, uh, we had discussions and focus groups with health sector workers and decision makers, municipalities that are responsible for health promotion activities in Finland, and also the local Alzheimer's Association. And together with them, we have uh, identified some key facilitators that would support effective Im implementation of finger-like model in real life. Important aspects are, for example, increasing knowledge, and this means knowledge both in the health sector persons, but also among population, older adults. Uh, it's important to be able to integrate the dementia prevention in, in other health education and um, health promotion activities that are ongoing, for example, for cardiovascular diseases and diabetes. Individualized and personalized guidance, group activities, practical tools and easy to use materials to support guidance. These are, we have actually, based on this, we have developed some materials that are, we are currently collecting feedback in Finland, how they work, are they, are they helping the healthcare professionals? Finding the right target group, having the right timing of the interventions and constant feedback and support. I would like to mention an interesting project that is just about to start in Stockholm. It's called Stronger 60 Plus. Here, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an implementation trial. So finger, doing finger model in a regular healthcare context. Here we are doing uh, research both on the efficacy, does the intervention work, but also on, the, on the, how the implementation work. Is it really adopted as it's supposed to? So it will be, I think, in interesting lessons learned for us all with this project. Um, since the first results of the finger came out in 2015, there has been a lot of interest by different research groups um, to start similar kind of uh, projects in, in other contexts, in other settings, in other countries. There's urgent need to expand the finger work to test the generalizability, adaptability and sustainability in diverse populations worldwide. Um, here we have launched this worldwide fingers network with the goal to really harmonize the research, research methods in these new prevention trials and, and to share our experiences and share our data and plan joint dementia prevention initiatives. I think this is really needed in order to have um, results that are comparable and bring stronger evidence to us all. Um, this figure was updated a couple of weeks ago, and it's already a bit old, as there are more and more groups and countries who are aiming to start or have started their own finger-like initiatives in their countries. Currently, there are more than 25 countries participating in the Worldwide Fingers Network. Uh, in the dark blue, you can see countries where there's active trial ongoing, for example, US Pointer and Mind China and Singer Trial. And then in lighter blue are countries where it's uh, a new projects are about to start or are in planning phase or seeking funding. 
So um, with this network, we are going to get much more evidence in the years to come. And I, th I think it's really wonderful collaboration from the, really from the start, from the initiation of the trials to uh, harmonize it very well. Here is uh, sort of the, the idea of the, of the new worldwide finger trials. So we try to keep the core methods really the same between the trials. So all trials would be multi-domain. They would be really pragmatic. It would be individualized, would have both group and individual sessions, and the outcomes would be as harmonized as possible. But then, of course, there needs to be adaptations. We cannot really p propose a Finnish diet in China. It's a little bit complicated. So really, local and cultural adaptations need to, need to happen to make it really acceptable and, and feasible in different contexts. This is really the first global network for the dementia prevention trials, and I believe that this will bring new information when the trials advance. Uh, we are coming to the end. So, um, key points I would say that we know today, based on observational studies that are many, 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 and now also based on, on, on uh, emerging evidence from trials, that substantial proportion of dementia and Alzheimer's disease cases is potentially preventable. There's multifactorial etiology, so it's likely that the most effective way to prevent is multi-domain interventions. It seems to be important to have targeted interventions start early and focus on at-risk persons. The new multi-domain trials that are ongoing that will have harmonized methods will really increase our understanding on, the, on, on, on prevention. And the future is multinational prevention trials and pragmatic prevention programs. It's really, it's, it's, even if we need more information, it's still, it's already the time that we put this into into place, into action. We need to have a prevention agenda that links dementia to other chronic non-communicable diseases. And this is something that we all need to work together. Lastly, I would like to thank our, our participants, our staff, our funders. We have too many people involved. It's really teamwork, and so I, it's impossible to name persons, but I would like to name mention our principal investigator, Mia Kivipelta, who is also leading the World Wide Fingers Initiative. And uh, many thanks to, to everybody working on this topic, and many thanks to all of you for listening. <laughs>